Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts, hold on tight. You're in for one crazy, epically cool, and amazing ride tonight on the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show. Hashtag one on YouTube. Tonight we have with us my new co-host, the awesome race car driver out of the state of Wisconsin, out of Forest Green, Wisconsin, nevertheless. He drives a go-kart. He is number 77, a.k.a. The Rev, Mr. Oliver Schultz. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Josh. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, I, yeah, I'm just happy happy to have this with you. Yes. So, Oliver, let's talk about your racing career on this awesome journey we have with you. So, Oliver, where did this awesome, super cool, amazing journey begin for you? Well, my my dad, he uh, he used to race back when he was in his 20s, living his prime. He uh he used to race dirt street stocks and he I I remember when I was little I used to help him push the street stock into the trailer I thought I was doing all the work really wasn't doing nothing uh and uh I just fell in love with racing then and then as soon as I turned I would like to say five years old I moved to kitty carts and raced my dad's number twenty one uh he just had a random sticker sitting around so I was number twenty one and uh then I moved on to uh quads on uh i raced them at the local uh motocross track and then i also ride race at on ice in circles uh i believe for two years and then i moved back into karting started in junior two and then now i'm in sportsman where i am right now okay so oliver when you first got into your cart for the first time what was that experience like for you were you just like Full in, going 100 miles an hour, like, you know what, I'm going to step on the gas and go full out here? Or did it take you a little while to get to that point? Well, my uh, my first ever race, I went out there. I uh, Well, I, I raced at the track. I don't race weekly. But I went out there, and I don't remember it too lot, but I think I just kind of got used to the cart, took it easy, and I believe I finished third in the feature out of five carts. And then I moved on to – a uh, shorter hairpin type like track that I race weekly and spun out three times in practice, then go out for heat one. And I won that heat out of uh, six carts, which I beat one of the best racers there. So I was pretty pumped. And then I believe heat two, I finished second. And then uh, my feature, I started pole and then got wrecked in turn one. So wasn't a good first second race for me, but um. Oliver, Oliver, okay, now let's talk, okay, you know, wasn't a good first race for you, so how long did it take you to get to that point in your career, where like, you know what, the wind started coming, and you're like, man, this is just epically cool, and, and you know, everything was clicking. Um, well, I think the big part about it was, too, it was kind of a learning experience for me and my dad, and the guys we were working with, just because, I mean, my dad, he moved straight into street, street stock, so he's no, he knew nothing about cars. So I, I think a big part of it was us both learning and working together. And it took us about, I would say, a year and a half to two years before we started to kind of get to feel comfortable with the car. And then we paired up uh, uh, at the end of last year, we paired up with Wyatt Blashy, um, also BRS uh, Racing. And that's kind of where it, it kind of all kicked off. And this year has been a, a huge learning experience for me. And it's been a lot of fun. I've been winning the races and uh, it's, it's good because he knows a lot about karting and I'm able to learn a lot as a driver. So, yeah. So Oliver, okay. Let's talk now about where did the 77 come from? Um, well, I, I, I don't know if anyone who's watching uh, if you guys watch NASCAR, you probably know Matt Kenseth. Uh, and my dad was a huge Matt Kenseth fan, and he was number 17. At least that's the only number I knew. So I uh, first started out with 17 when I would just kind of run the house and I would run race or something like that. I'd say number 17. Then I moved to seven just because I wanted to try something else, but I still like that number seven. And then I I don't know, once I got back into uh, – because I kind of took a break in between cart, uh, kitty carts and uh, quads, and I just picked 77. Just, I don't know why. I just like the number. I like the way it looked. So I'm sorry that I was kind of trying to swap the thing away with my notebook here with you. I have a honeybee that's trying to make, trying to, <laughs> trying to make its home on me, and I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Bye. Oliver, um, so Oliver, let's talk about um, okay. You know, when it comes to your racing career, who helps sponsor your racing team? Um, who has sponsored me? You said. Yes. Yes. Who helps sponsors you? Okay. Um. Well, a lot of them were hometown, uh, just businesses and uh, my dad's friends, but. We have uh, Action Auto Body. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't know many off the top of my head just because my usually it's my dad that does a lot of this, but uh, Action Auto Body, uh, 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 ooh, I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, Dead Man Inc. Uh, mm, uh, Christy Deeg, uh, she has, a, I believe it's Real Team. And then I have uh uh Amsoil. Uh uh sorry, it's so I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. But uh That's fine. Uh, That's fine. Those are the four that I come up with. I'll be sitting here installing all of the the entire time. So oh, you're you're totally fine. You're totally fine. So Oliver, are you still looking for sponsors for your racing team? Um, I'm at, we're still looking for sponsors, obviously. Uh, curling's a very expensive sport, so any sponsor we can get helps us a bunch. And uh, we right away get a paint, uh, not paint suit, but we right away get a, a nice fresh body every single year, and we put all of our sponsors on it and everything like that. So every sponsor is greatly appreciated. Okay, so Oliver, um, when I get done talking to you on the racing show, I'd like to kind of talk to you on the phone because I have something I wanted to talk to you about, pretty special. So. So Oliver, um, when it comes to your racing career, where did the nickname the Rev come from? Well, um, when I, I I joined BRS with White Washi, he asked my dad if I had a nickname, and me and my dad kind of waited, like kind of sat there for like a half a day, day or so, just kind of trying to think of a nickname, because really the only nickname I had in school was my dad's old nickname when he was in high school. And it wasn't really very good nickname. So we were kind of thick and my dad brought up the rev and I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of like that nickname. So he, uh, he made a, 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 a thing on a Facebook kind of listed who I was and that I was joining uh BRS and he put all over the rev Schultz and it's just kind of stuck ever since. Very cool. So Oliver, um, when it comes to your racing career, who is your racing hero? Who do you look up to most of your racing career here? Um, I would have to say Ryan Blaney. Uh, first ever die cast I ever got. I remember going to the store with my grandma, and I picked a Ryan Blaney die cast, and it just I I've always lived up to be. I want to be Ryan Blaney. I always I don't really want to go to NASCAR, but I I just I always saw he was such a a a, a cool and respectable guy in the racing world yes so oliver okay have you ever met ryan blaney i have never met ryan blaney so oliver um so uh going into your racing career now a little bit further what is your five-year plan with your racing career what, what do you have on the radar for five years out um so coming up in five i believe my dad we are talking and actually we're playing again in a sport mod, IMCA sport mod here coming up. And then uh, we want to get an IMC sport mod within a year or two, uh, probably towards the end of this year. And then uh, I don't really know where I want to go from sport mod. I think I'll, I'll race sport mods for, well, that five years. Okay. How about in 10 years? Where do you want to be at in 10 years with your racing career? In 10 years? Well, I, I would love to race uh late models, uh, but I, I think I am not I I don't uh I don't really have the money to pay for a late model. So I think I'll at most I think I'll move up to modifieds, um, but I think I'll stick with sport mods for eight or nine years, and then I'll think about possibly moving up. Okay, so Oliver, do you have like a particular chassis builder that you're looking at for Sport Mod? You know, like Rage chassis, Harris, any of them? What which is which is your chassis builder you're gonna go with? Well, it, no matter what, it's not gonna be a match metric. My dad hates metrics, so oh. um, really just 
I, a big thing around here is you don't really need to stick a bunch of money into a chassis or anything like that. So really just a 6,000, 7,000 uh, chassis that we can kind of build up from the ground, a roller, something like that. And really, as long as it's not metric, it works. And I mean, my we don't really care as long as it's not too old and it, it has some updates on it. Um, yeah, I mean, it works. Okay, very cool. So Oliver, um, now okay, we're at this portion of the racing show now. Who helps work on your stuff? Who, who's in the pit area with you? You know, making sure stuff's getting ready for you. So when you're ready to hit that track, that you're ready to go. Uh, I it has to be my dad. My dad's always every single time I'm at the, at home. It's always we're getting stuff done with the car. My dad. That's always tinkering with stuff. I mean, if he, he doesn't have anything to do, he just randomly uh, brings out the, the wash and a rag and starts washing off the body. He always has something to do. And it seems like my dad has always been there, always working on the cart and helping me stay competitive in karting. And uh, no matter what, wants to put me out there. My dad always says a cleaner cart's a faster cart. So he likes to really get into those fine details. So, okay. Very, very cool philosophy. I like that. So Oliver, um, okay, when you're at the racetrack and you're getting ready to take the track, what is what helps get you mentally focused to go out there? Um, well, a lot of times I just like to, I I always do my pre-race prayer. Uh, I like to read my Bible a lot, so I always do my prayer, and uh, I wish all the drivers for safety, and uh, I I sing a th- song in my head. I uh really any song uh that i can think of off the top of my head and just kind of smooths soothes the nerves uh i got that from my uncle uh uncle cow my grandma she uh she used to tell me stories because my uncle cow used to win like basically as soon as like once he got into curtain he started winning a a bunch of championships at all because we used to have like five tracks around here locally and he just would win 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 and she always tell me that he sings he never would tell her because apparently it's a little embarrassing but he always sung a, sang a song in his head uh, right before the races and kind of soothed them, soothed them his nerves. So uh, I just kind of, I it worked for me, and I just sing whatever song comes up, usually country. Okay, now we're going to go to this portion here. Who is your favorite country artist now there, Oliver? Uh, probably um, Luke Bryan. Ooh, good choice, man. My friend, good, good choice. I like him, and I like a little Jason Aldean too. You know, to kind of kick things off and get things rolling. Yeah. So uh, I, the, the weird thing about me though is, I, 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 my dad, I can, I can sing a song in my head. Have no idea what the song's called. Have no idea what the art about what the artist is or anything like that. I just don't. For some reason, I just don't pay attention to it. I'm always, I just, I know the song in my head, but I don't know who, who sang it or the name of it. So. Uh, I don't really know who exactly Luke Bryan just kind of came to head, and I know he sang some of my favorite songs. What am I what am, going going to this portion, Oliver? You're talking about songs. When I went to go do a job about show oh, about four or five years ago, I was down the cruise down the road of my phone, mounted to my dash, and it was in a little colder, and I had the radio blaring, and everybody's like, "What the heck are you listening to?" And I'm like, "Well, y'all don't understand. Is I'm listening to some Breaking Benjamin. That's kind of." Get me into the mode, you know. I got to get into the work mode, you know. Get some breaking Benjamin rolling through the car. We're good. <laughs> yeah, I I always like to listen to my my dad. No matter what, you no know, like if we're going three or four hours away or something like that, he's always got some some country going on in the background. It has it pretty tuned down just so he has some background noise, and then he has the window cracked for some background noise. It, it's just it doesn't seem feel right when I'm not in the car and that's not going on in the background. Yeah. So Oliver, um, when you're at the racetrack and you're getting hungry, what's your favorite thing to eat at the racetrack? Um, I actually I I don't eat at the racetrack. I I just get sick to my stomach and it I just mm. I, I don't eat, eat like at most at noon and then I don't eat for the rest of the time. So what's your go to drink at the racetrack then? Uh Powerade. Powerade, uh Power. it's strawberry lemonade. That I like Paul Raid and it just it, it, it gets that thirst, you know. Uh right when I get out of the, the card, I just right away 
grab a strawberry lemonade Powerade and I uh, usually take a stroll just to get my mind off things. And then I'm right there ready, helping, uh, helping get the cart ready for the next heat or the feature. So do you ever go up and watch the activity on the track say, okay, this is where it's happening at. This is where we need to make some adjustments at. Um, a lot of times I, I, I like to, the, my dad and uh, Wyatt, he, they usually don't like to, to let me know on the sub just so I don't get in my head. But a lot of times I, right after the races, I take my walk and then I go up and talk to him and I just kind of let him know how the cart felt uh, and what some things were working on tight and center uh, loose going into the corner and they make the adjustments and, uh, we go out for the next race and it, the cart usually is a lot better as long as we know the chassis. Okay. So Oliver, okay. When you're away from the racetrack, then where's your go-to restaurant away from the racetrack? Um, restaurant away from the racetrack. Um, well, I, I don't really go to restaurants, but I, uh, I go to a lot of local, uh, uh, like just kind of low key, kind of like bar restaurants around here. And I would say my favorite ones are two tabs on Ave is the name of the, it's kind of like a sign right on the road. And there's, there's two bars right on the road and their food is delicious. And, uh, they always got diet sun drop, which I love dying sun drop. Okay. When you go to restaurants like that, what do you like to order off the menu? So you can kind of give me some ideas. So if I ever would come out and visit you, you know, you can say, you know what, this is where you need to hit out. Um, well, I like uh, sometimes I'll get chicken tenders and French fries. And other times if they, most of the time, though, if I'm with my dad, I'll get a pizza and we'll share 12 inch uh, pepperoni mm. and sausage. And uh, uh, that's really our, our thing is whenever it's just me and him, uh, we always get a pizza and we share it. I'll tell you what, Oliver, you come out here to the Midwest where I'm at, because you're in Wisconsin, you come down here to Iowa, I'm going to introduce you to a pizza that you're going to be like, oh my God. Down here, we have what is Godfather's Pizza. I don't know if you guys have that or not up there. Godfather's Pizza, they make a super taco pizza, and it's just like, wow. That, that's <laughs> I'm always up to any topics on my pizza that I could try, except for pineapple pizza. I don't, I don't think that I don't think that's a good matchup. No, no, that's true. So when you're at home, Oliver, what's your favorite home cooked meal that your family makes for you? Uh, I would have to say, uh, 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 trying to think of what the name is. Uh, I like quesadillas, and then I also like tacos. Ooh. Ooh, good choices, my friend. So, uh, if you oh, introduce, if you introduce me to that taco pizza, I'll probably like it. Okay, very cool, very cool, very cool. So, Oliver, um, what do you like to do for fun away from the racetrack? Um, well, I, I played football since I was in five k. I'm in eighth grade now, so uh, I I just like I like playing football and football obviously in the fall so it's now year so I, I just like to stay active I uh, I run uh runs with my mom I run 10k's and 5k's and stuff like that with her and it it's really uh, I like having an activity with my mom and I also enjoy just like like I said it being an activity is I like moving around if I, I have to be tinkering with something I have to be uh doing something I can't just be sitting around and doing nothing Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I get you, I get you, I get you. So, Oliver, um, I know you said you're a really good football player. You play basketball. You play a basketball player too? Um, well, I, I'm uh, I'm five. Uh, I would like I would like to say five nine, five nine and a half, but I I haven't I haven't gotten my height measured in a while. So, uh, I I think my height my height really helps me in basketball. Uh, I'm a big, I like to be in the paint. I like to be right there making layups and stuff like that. I, I'm a terrible three-point shooter. I tried sh th shooting a three-pointer in the game and I hit the top of the backboard. So, uh, I, I'm not doing that again. Uh, but I, it's, it's mostly just a sport I like to do for fun. I don't really, it's not really an all -down thing, but I just like to go out there and have fun. I'll tell you what, Oliver, another thing too, if you ever play me in a game of basketball, your first words, if you ever see me is, who is that tall jug of water? Because I am I'm I'm six foot five inches tall. Holy smokes, Shaquille! <laughs> <O 'Neal. laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and I wear a size 14, 15 shoe easily. <laughs> yeah, we have a kid on our football team, and I mean, you could think, I mean, like, you know, those big shoes clowns wear. I mean, this is, he has bright yellow cleats that look like clown shoes, and he walls around, and he plays on the old line, and it, it just doesn't even look normal. It looks literally looks like a clown shoe that you'd see at a circus. Wow, wow, wow. So, Oliver, um, what do your school friends think of you being a race car driver? Um, well, there's really not much for mechanics or the trades or racer and stuff like that in our school. We don't really have many kids that are interested in that. Kids kind of still think they're going to make the NFL. So um, usually I just don't really talk about the topic. Um, but I do have some friends that watch. I have a friend or two that watch the world of OA. So sometimes we'll talk about that. Okay, okay, okay. You can talk to me about racing anytime. You know, that's that's entirely – I that's what I love about the sport and love about what you do, you know, that type of thing there. Um, so, Oliver, um, okay. So, Oliver, is there anybody else you would like to send a special thank you out to for your racing and forgetting you where you are with your racing? Um, I would like to first thanks my, thank my, my mom and my dad and my mom for always being there, always, no matter what, no matter if I'm – Fashion last, which I mean, I, I, I hopefully I don't do, uh, but even even if I'm doing that, she's always right there to support me. And I, I like to thank my dad for I. It seems like he always puts just racing first and me having fun. And if I, if he can, he tries to get me with the best uh, equipment out there as he can. And uh, Wyatt Blashy for, um, just make me competitive again. I it felt like me and my dad were just kind of had a struggle point. And uh, he was right there and he noticed us at the track and he came up and we weren't really anything special. And he was willing to help out someone who didn't have a feature one yet. And he's helped us all this year and we've learned a ton and we're ready to go for the Badger 50 coming up on Saturday. Okay. Okay. So Oliver, um, I'll tell you what, I've got some other questions for you. Okay. So what do you think of this whole racing show bit that, you know, me and you are embarking on? Um, I, I think it's really cool. I, I think it's cool to spread the, the carding uh, around, I mean, the entire country, you know. I think it's cool that you're, we're interviewing and I can help out interview guys from California, Texas, all that stuff, just all around the country. And I, I think it will be really cool to grow this show where we can grow the sport of carding because it, it seems like in the Midwest it's just kind of been a dying thing where unless you were born in the family, you're not really into racing very much. I mean – um, I, so I, I just love to help. Oh, I want to grow the sport of karting. I, I love to see other kids uh, come into karting, and it seems to be something that I, just like me and my dad, uh, seems to be something that their parents and them can work on and have fun, and I, I just want to see the community grow. So what do you think the experience is going to be like working with me? Um, I, I think you're a sweet guy, uh, uh, Josh, and I, I just, I love working with you, uh, really kind, really friendly, and, uh, I, I'm really excited to see how we can work together to, uh, have, have the show, uh, grow. Okay. So do you have any compliments for me going, going this far with you as far as the racing show was? Um, well, yeah, I don't really have, like, I, I, as kind of a compliment, uh, I I just would like to say thanks for having me. This is a huge thing for me, and I'm really excited to to work with you. And it, you're, if I was to work with anyone on a race and show, it would probably be you because you. I I always a big thing in my life was I I have a lot of knowledge on racing, football, and stuff like that. And it just kind of seems like people always doubted me just because I'm a kid. And it seems like as soon as I got called you for the first time after you hit me and my dad up to see if we can do this show it just seemed right away that it doesn't matter how old I am or something like that you're going to take me seriously and uh take everything to heart uh no matter what like my age is okay and I'm going to do you another favor there Oliver you know I was a Pittsburgh Steeler fan up until this point and I've been kind of thinking about this for the last week or so it was going to be you know I'm going to join you over on the Cleveland Brown side, I think. There we go. <laughs> I, my, my, used to be, uh, the reason I'm a Browns fan in this first place is 
my uh my dad he used to be a Browns fan as a child and I found one of he had a little tiny action figure with a helmet on its head and uh I saw it and it was a Browns uh it was it had a Browns jersey on it and I right away I like the Browns actually the first time I ever heard of the Browns uh I thought I knew everything about the NFL and then all of a sudden I hear someone tell me that whoa the Browns finally won and I'm pretty sure it was their year right before their uh, winless season and that was the first time I ever heard the Browns and for some reason I just really liked them from that point on okay very cool very cool well what I wanted to talk to you about Oliver okay I'm going to turn the mic over to you first of all but at the end of the show I do want to talk to you and then I'm going to call you and talk more about it so you go ahead and ask me some questions now I'm going to let you go right ahead and hit me with your best shot um well the big thing I'd like to ask you is How'd you get into racing? How did I get into racing? All right. This is a story I like to share myself, Oliver. It kind of was a family deal. Um, you know, never knew it until I got to be uh, 12, 13, 14 years old. I used to go to the races every week. But back when I was 12, 13, 14 years old, I started getting really into it. And I would watch it on TV, but I'd never be there at a local track. It would be I'd go watch a race at a local track, but I'd never really get into it. Well, lo and behold, when I was 13, 14 years old, Oliver, I happened to be at a track about a half hour due east of me, and we were just watching some races, and was just hanging out and watching some IMCA mods, and was talking about Leo, about my family, and who I'm related to, that type of thing there, and lo and behold, scary enough, that night, it was, it was quite interesting, they're like, do you realize you're related to Mike Eisner? I didn't see him modified. He was like, what? You're like, yeah, you, you're, that's, that's, that's your cousin on your mom's side. And I was like, you know, what? You're like, that's pretty cool. He drives the one mod. Okay. Well, then lo and behold, I was walking around a little bit and somebody else came up to me and they're like, did you say your last name was Nolan? And I said, well, yeah. And they're like, your dad used to be, before he changed his name, his, his last name was White, right? And I said, yeah, yeah. They're like, do you realize that you're related to another IMCA modified driver? And I was like, Again, what? <laughs> like, yeah, they're like, Doug Peterson, who drives the 76 8 4 car, is your other cousin, and he's on your dad's side. And I was like, so uh, when it comes to the A mods, I'm not even gonna, get, I'm not even gonna play the guessing game who's gonna win this. I'm just gonna say whoever wins is, is what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. I think it's so cool that you grew up with a, a hometown track watching and, uh, it, it's cool to I, I love hearing stories from people to see how they got into sport racing. I mean, it's just like people learning about the football, just like I was when I was in kindergarten. And uh, I, I guess I I think one of the 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 things I like to talk about the most is when people say like, well, racing isn't really a sport. And I love explaining to them like there's a lot more to racing than just turning left and crashing. Into that, people. Is that is true. That is true. That is true. But uh, on to the next question. Um, yes. um, how did you, like, where did you and uh, your buddies learn, like, kind of get up and start this podcast? This is another cool story, okay? It all started with you kids in racing is how it all started. Um, I thought about working in the racing industry for a good number of years, and I mean a really good number of years, and just didn't know the avenues. I was going to go to school to become a, a, a um, graphic artist, and it just didn't happen. Even though I excelled really well in school, it just, it just, the people that were supposed to get me ready for college, just, it didn't happen. So I was like, you know, if I get the afternoon to work in racing, that's, that'd be awesome. So lo and behold, a friend of mine that I had met through Facebook, um, he raced for years through IMC Auto uh, Sport Mods, and he drives the 54E. And just one day he decided, he's like, can I call you, Josh? And I'm like, play of them. I've got time for a conversation. Go, you've got time for a conversation. And he's like, okay. So he called me up and he's like, Josh, I noticed one thing with your Facebook page. And I says, well, what is that? He says, you have a lot of race car drivers on your Facebook page. Do something with it. And I says, play of what kind of crazy idea do you have here? I says, I know you're a successful businessman. You own your own company. You do power washing for businesses. And you race. But what kind of off the wall idea do you have here? And he says, Well, you know, I'll tell you what, Josh. He says, My idea is all the other great big race car drivers, uh, mass car drivers, whatever, have their own racing show. 
He says, why not do one for the kids? And I was like, I never really thought about it that way. But I says, first off, I've never been on a camera day in my life. This could be rather interesting. He's like, let's just do a couple test episodes and see what happens off of Facebook Live. I thought, well, okay, let's give it a shot. So we started out with 38 viewers. Two years later, when we left Facebook, Oliver, to go to YouTube, this mm-hmm. is the crazy story about this. When we left Facebook to go to YouTube, we had over 2,000 some viewers throughout the USA and Canada. Holy and smokes. It was, it was it was really crazy. And all at once, one of the kids I had on my recent show, his mom and dad approached me, sent me a message to Messenger and said, hey, can we call you? Mark and Samantha Taylor, go right ahead. Let's sit down and talk. Um, I've got all the time in the world, you know, talk to my guests, whatever. I, I'm a tons of time for you guys. It's 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 if I've got something going on, I put that on the back burner to talk to you guys because it's it's my favorite thing to do. They called me up and we were sitting there talking and they're like, you know, Josh, we realize you got over two thousand some viewers throughout the USM camp. Yep. Have you kind of thought about things and kind of thought, you know, you started to grow outgrow Facebook? I says, I have, but I don't know the avenues to go with us. I says, you know, I can either go this route, or go this route, or go that route. They're like, we'll make you a deal. First off, what you don't know about us is we have degrees in marketing. We we have we have a marketing company. Okay, cool. So um, we're just starting this marketing company, nevertheless, because we work for other marketing agencies. Uh, we're a husband and wife marketing team. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. We would like to sit down and offer you a deal to pay for you to go to YouTube. And I was just like, <laughs> is this legit, like for real? And they says, yes. They says, we'll buy you the, everything you need. We'll do do all the editing behind the scenes as far as um, Zoom wise. Let's just see where it goes. Um, you know, we have a really good, strong possibility this is going to go places. I said, okay. So we started out, you know, started out the beginning again, and we reached 240 subscribers and 9,000 plus views, which is huge. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah, it is pretty big. And the crazy story is, is when I first started this, Oliver, which you don't know is, and I don't know if I ever shared this story with you or not, I had had a, a kid that I had had when he first started this out as I knew, because I used to coach baseball. You know, you didn't know, you didn't know that either. I used to coach Little League Baseball. Well, one of the kids I met through little coach in Little League Baseball, he had been down on his luck, and he had reached his early 20s. And I said, you know, Sam, I'm doing this racing show. We're moving over to you. Looking for a co-host. Would you be up for it? And he's like, man, you know, you're giving me an opportunity to change my life. He says, I've been down on my luck. I've been hanging out with the wrong people. I said, Sam, I have faith in you. We, we're going to change your whole image. We're going to make you make you awesome and you know change your life because i'm going to be here with you through this ride and he's like man he's like you give me this opportunity okay i said yeah he says yeah i'll do it i'll do it it." so me and him filmed a couple episodes the tragic story behind this is we were taking a two-week break because i needed the time to catch up i've been busy with the racing show non-stop for two years in a row now nah, two to three years in a row, nonstop. And I just said, you know, Sam, we filmed a couple of episodes. Let's take a little two-week break, get our minds clear. Let's let's still communicate. Let's work on ideas. Okay, cool. Well, in the, the two-week time span that um, we were off, I was hanging out with some friends of mine. Get a really bad um, message on Facebook, and it just kind of took me to my knees. And I just was like, Wow, can't believe this is happening. Um, we had taken our two weeks off, and the day before the incident happened, I had talked to him. I said, Sam, I'm looking forward to coming back with you. We're, we're building on this. You know, I'm real excited to work with you again. And he's like, yeah, I am too, man. He says, I'm working ideas, boom, 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 boom. Well, two people he thought was his friends, Oliver, got him into a wrong situation. And, you know, you got to really – Feel out your friends and know who your friends are. If we're going to get you into trouble, that's not a good idea. And they um, said, hey, let's go, let's go up for a ride. Well, needless to say, Sam went out for a ride with him. His friends got him overdosed and he died at his dad's place on our two-week break. I'm really sorry. 
for that, Josh. And I, uh, I, I think I, I know a big thing that I, I've always been told um, from my, from my mom. She, she works for a police department. And my, my stepdad. And I think a big thing is just surround you with the right people. And I, I, a lot of times I have to uh, hear stories like that when my mom comes home from work and she'll kind of tell stories, like not really stories, not usually or anything but that like that, but just to kind of warn us, like just to make sure that we stay with the wrong, right people. And uh, it, it's it's really sad to hear that. And I, I just, I, I think a, a big thing I would like to spread too is just the word that there's there's things out there where like, even if you are a kid, you're not indestructible and stuff like that can happen so easily i mean oh. I, well especially in the midwest i mean I, obviously we're a pretty heavily drinking uh section of the u.s and um it it's just so common i i i wish there was something i could do to spread the word that it like i said you're not invincible um and that you got and to you know, and you know the worst part is oliver is going to that funeral and his mom come up to me, and she's bawling. And I just said, Christy, I don't know what to say. I really don't. I said, you know, we were doing things with this show. She's like, I was proud of you guys. You guys had it figured out. You were changing his life. And I said, I know. And I said, this is the sucky part. I don't ever get to have another memory like that with him ever again. Yeah. 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 I, I guess I, I don't really know what to say. I... I, I... I, I kind of I, I I feel I, I I feel for the loss and I, I feel for everybody like that was around him. I, I think a big thing that I always think about when I'm down is what my my mom would think or something like that. Something like that would happen to me. And I I, 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 don't know, I, I, I guess I don't really know what to say, you know. Yeah, I hear you, Oliver. I hear you. Um, yes. So, Oliver, um then, by God's grace, you came into my world, and we're gonna we're gonna give us an awesome shot. We're gonna give us an awesome shot, and we're gonna we're gonna go places. Yeah, I, I I'm excited to to do this with you. And like I said, uh, me and well, not like I said on the show, but me and you have been in contact, and I've I've definitely got some ideas written up on how we can we can we can really grow this, and I'd like to get it to a thousand, two thousand subscribers if I can. Um. And just inch by inch, way by way, add new things, and uh, I'm I'm just really excited, and uh, hopefully I can help the the karting and racing community grow. I'll tell you what, Oliver. Put on your calendar to come out and visit me next summer because I'll tell you what, if I can get you to do a sprint card track, hopefully we can run into a couple people I know, and they're going to totally leave you speechless because you're going to be just like, whoa. Um, there is a guy, and I have not seen him for years. Hope to God I can run into him because, like I said, you you're gonna be like, man, I can't believe this guy is doing this. He's out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and I just happened to be at a track with a friend of mine, and he has his car number six one two. I thought, well, three sixty four ten six one two. Okay, cool. So then I seen one of his jackets that a friend of mine had on. This is it says T I G A, and I was like. What is that message all about? And he says, well, Josh, he says, um, we're fans of his because it's what it means is trust in God always. Very cool message. So he, he says, we want you, we're going to introduce you to John. Because he's going to, you're just going to be speechless and you're going to, you're going to want to have a conversation. His name is Isaac Short. Okay, cool. So we went down and um, visited with him. We got down to his pit, actually. And my friends are like, hey, um, you see that guy in the wheelchair? Yeah. Do you believe he drives a 410 360 sprint car? And I was like, how is that incredible? How is that possible? And went over and had a conversation with him. And he says, you know, Josh, he says, my injuries come from running motocross. They didn't come from racing sprint cars. And he says, after I got injured, I said to myself, I'm not going to give up on my dream. And I said, well, that's awesome, Isaac. How, my next question is, how do you drive your sprint car with being paralyzed from the waist down? He says, on the steering wheel, I've got two handles, one for the gas, one for the brake. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah, it's almost, uh, I don't know if you guys race lawnmowers down there, but uh, they've got a little, like, almost like a brake on a bike 
just like juice in the gas. And I, I always think it, it's cool to hear stories about how people persevere and find ways to do things that they love. I mean, we I, I've seen NFL. I, I believe there was a player on the Seahawks who played without one hand and he ended up being one of the best Seahawks defensive players of that team. And another driver I would love to introduce you to, Oliver. You get out here. And I, I hope to God we can run into him, too. I swear, we'll, hopefully we'll run into him at one of the sprint car races. Guy out of Sioux Falls, he drives a number 39 car. He's retired now. But just by chance, I happened to run into him when I was first started getting into racing again, going to the local tracks, like I was saying. And some friends I was with said to me, hey, um, you see that number 39 car? Yeah. Let's, let's go down to this pit area after this. Okay, cool. Went down to this pit area. Lo and behold, Oliver, he is deaf. And I'm like, how does he know what's going on with the car if he's deaf? And they're like, he just senses it. And I said, well, my next question is, how does he communicate with his crew? They're like, sign language. All, all of his crew guys know sign language. And if, if he, they don't, he's got a notepad where he can write it out. And I was like, that is really fascinating, too. Yeah, like I said, I, I I always think it's it's cool to see stories. I I, I know I I donated to, or I I tried to donate to a, a charity that uh I, I I was really into gaming a couple of years ago, and I there's a company a charity named uh, Able Gamers, and they make special equipment for uh gamers or stuff like that that they're able even with disabilities and stuff like that are still able to play their favorite games, and it, it's really the same with that and racing and stuff like that and football and stuff like that where there's always a way to per, like, like I said persevere and find a way to do what you love okay yeah there is there is there is definitely so Oliver I'm ready for your next question <laughs> um uh let me let me think of this um what what did you play any sports growing up I was a Special Olympic athlete because I have some learning disabilities, have a little bit of autism, so I did play some sports. What you don't know about me, and me and your mom talked about this. I don't know if she shared you with you the stories of what my athletic career was. I am a 12-time state champion, one-time national title holder. For uh, what? Sorry, I you kind of broke up there. I, I'm a 12-time I'm a state champion. Jeez. And a one and a one-time national title holder. Gee, is, what, what sport is that? I got chose. Well, what happened is, is after winning so many state championships, they had this deal where you could, for being a special athlete, you put your name in, the last application, put your name in, and if you got chose, you got to compete against 3,800 athletes from across the United States to be the number, number one ranked athlete in the particular sport you, that you got chose for. So me and my family were just like, what's what's the odds here? Let's just let's just fill out the application and see what happens. Filled it out. Josh got picked to play tennis. So Josh knew tennis skills, but he didn't know the game of tennis. So at this point, Josh was like, okay, you know what? Josh needs to hire a private a private trainer to train him for this event because this you're competing against 3,800 athletes from across the nation for a, a solid week. Across with record crowd, nevertheless. So I hired a trainer, worked out, just kept my body going, and just worked out and worked out and worked out and worked out. So we went down to this deal. It was called the National Special Olympic Games, the first ever one in Ames, Iowa. 3,800 athletes from across the United States, 2006. We get down there, we meet with our delegation, because we're Team Iowa. And we the, the day of the opening ceremonies, we had a really interesting knock on the door, Oliver. And your mom, your mom don't even know this story. I haven't even shared this with your mom yet. The first day we were there, knock on the door. He's knocking on the door. Well, it happened to be Tim Shriver. Big wig in the in the special beginning. Big, big name. He comes up to us and he's like, How would you guys like to be famous? What do you mean by famous? Well, I have this opportunity for you guys. If you guys want to take the opportunity to do it, let's meet down in the conference room. All right, you can see my Okay, cool. So we met down there. 
his opening words to us are, I have an opportunity for you guys to do a guest spot on the Today Show. Excuse me, say what? <laughs> Josh is like, say what? <laughs> so when did the guest spot, and that was pretty awesome. Well, then we did the opening ceremonies. Well, then the next day, we had my first round of competition that I had practiced before. So we went to practice, and then I had to do competition that afternoon. One of my local coaches comes up to me as I'm coming. Because at this point, when we're doing nationals, we have security guards, police officer security guards, escorting us from A to B to C, which is insane. Oh. Pretty cool. Yeah. Well, one of, the, um, one of my local coaches comes up and says, hey, can I talk to you? I'm like, well, who are you? And the, he's the, my local coach is like, hey, I'm his local coach from Estherholm. Can I come up and talk to you? Yeah, no problem. She comes up to me and she says, do you really know how famous you are? And I was like, not the foggiest idea, Diana. Not the foggiest idea. She's like, your picture made it on the cover of the Des Moines Register. Excuse me, say what? <laughs> so yeah, my picture was on the cover of the Des Moines Register for an entire day. That was pretty huge. Well, then I advanced yeah. to the first... First round of competition, beat a guy from Colorado. Okay, cool. Well, second round, me and the guy that I competed in the second round, we have the same record. Okay, cool. So I went and just wiped the floor with him in tennis. So going into the final round, me and the guy I played in the final round, Oliver, were undefeated going into the final round. He comes up to me, and he says, Josh, he says, um, I'd like to let you know that I'm such and such. Okay, nice to meet you. He says, I want you to know that I've trained for three to four years with Andre Agassi and Andy Roddick, two of the world-famous tennis players in the United States. And my first thought was, oh, my God, I have met my match. It's over. It is over. So we went and um, our referees for tennis were from the U.S. Open. Huge tennis deal. They deal with Serena Williams, Andre Agassi, the whole ball of wax. I went and played the final round, and then they have a different scoring scale. So went and completed the final round, and they escorted us over to where we were waiting in the waiting area to go to and get our awards. My security, that was my personal detail security, says to me, I'm going to escort you in, but there's going to be a podium. There's going to be fourth, third, second, first. You start walking, and I will tell you when to stop. Okay, sir, not a problem. So we get in there, press and media all over the place. And it's, like I said, it's a huge affair. So we get in there, people with cameras, like I said, press and media. So I start walking, we get to the fourth. And he says, well, keep walking. Okay. So I make it to third. He's like, keep walking. So I walked up one more step. And he says to me, and it hadn't sunk into me yet what was what was about to happen. He says to me, stop. And it kind of, I was kind of going through my own emotions at the time, kind of, you know, just calming down from everything I'd been through the whole week. I looked down at it and said, number one. I was like, number one? Oh, what does this mean? So we got presented our awards. Uh, I got presented a gold championship medal type deal. And we get ready to walk out, and I look at my security, and I says, so what's this one all about? And he says, do you realize that you're the number one ranked test player in the United States for four years? Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was a pretty huge moment. That was a, definitely a huge moment. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, me, I, I'm such a... Uh, awkward person. If I was put in that situation, I'd probably, holy smokes. I mean, that is <laughs> yeah. cool. number one in the world. I mean, that's that's big. Yep. And they're like, you know, you're one step away from Team USA. And I was like, oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, Team USA. That would, that would have been a trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, that, yeah, met a lot of celebrities that week. Oliver uh, met Jody Messina, the country singer, very awesome to deal with. Met Darius Rucker and Rudy and the Blowfish. Oh my God, they're awesome. Um, met Tom Arnold. 
And like I said, met a lot of celebrities. It was it was really quite interesting to be in that zone for for six to seven days. Yeah, that's uh, it's such yeah. a such a cool story to see. I mean, that not to see to hear. And uh, I I always like like whenever I'm walking around in public, I I always think to myself like everybody that you run into has some type of story through their generation or just in their life that you would be shocked by, you know, and it, it's so cool. And I almost wish I could hear everybody's story, you know, cause it, it, it almost feels like, like I said, like it, I, I, whenever I see somebody walk by, I have no idea who they are. It's like, they probably have something in their timeline that they have stories to tell. And it, it's, it's, it's so cool to think that everybody has connections to celebrities, stuff like that. And they always have their family stories, you know? And another cool story, Oliver, is two of my state championships come in three-on-three basketball. I went into my last state championship basketball game, Oliver. My team went undefeated all the way through. Oh, that's uh... I, I like I said, I'm six foot five. I had my last state championship game I played. I had 18 points by myself with no assists. That's afraid. I that's like Kobe Bryant stats. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. One of the guys I met in the final round, he says to me, he says, I'm taller than you. You ain't going to block me. I'm like, dude, you may be taller than me, but I'm stronger than you. And if you block me, you're going to go for a ride. And he tried to block me in the paint, and he went sliding clear across the floor. And he's like, oh, my God, you are strong. And I was like, I told you. I told you. Don't block me because it'll be game over for you. <laughs> I always think it's funny people go up. It, like I always see in sports and stuff like that where people go up. And uh, we had one time when we were playing a football match and uh, we were playing Nina, and uh, which is a pretty darn, it's a pretty darn good team around here. And they come, they get all their bus because it's it's uh they're playing away at our field, and they're all saying, "You guys suck. We're gonna destroy y'all." Uh, you guys stand no chance. Well, we ended up being them forty-two to nothing. So, uh, yeah, that just goes to show you can you can talk all you want, but it it does it's not going to change the way you perform on the field. Yep, and like I said, Oliver, I got a friend I'm going to have to introduce you to. You ever come out here to visit me? His name is Nate, but he goes by Nigel or Nitro is his, is his other nickname. He used to play football in high school, and I'll tell you, Oliver. When when he got out of high school, I started hanging out with him because he's into racing, a lot of racing. We, we stock racing stories all the time. Um, went to go work out with him one day, and we were out in his backyard. And they had the, the football practice field out there, and they had tractor tires because you guys flip tractor tires. You know, when you get older into high school, you guys will flip tractor tires. He's like, he's like, watch this, Josh. And he literally was bench pressing a tractor tire and was like, Remind me never to make you mad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think a, a thing that I learned from racing and football is you can be as big as and as strong as you want, but it's really all about that mentality and just knowing, thinking as soon as you get on that field, not beating yourself or track, just not being yourself before you go out there, and you 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 just got to have that confidence. Um, I mean, I'm not the biggest, I'm not the strongest, I'm not the tallest. But I go out there and I find a way to succeed every single week. And I just I I think a big thing that I've always struggled with is just being myself before I even go up against somebody like or I already down myself. And I think once you get all your head and once you kind of beat your brain almost, you you really you can perform as much as you can. And uh, God puts in everybody as much skill. Everybody has the exact same skill. It just it matters on how much you you put into it and how much you can, you can fight your brain and not let it, it not let it almost. I mean, I would, I almost find my brain as a disadvantage, you know, I'm going to tell you something, Oliver, when you host this racing show, if you ever get to the point where, you know, when, when we get to start the racing show, you get a little nervous. I will turn around, look at you and I'll say, Oliver, breathe, relax. I've got you. We, we will get through this together. I've got you. Just, just breathe. You'll be all right. Yeah, I, I, I always like to. I, a lot of times, like, like I said, I, 
I find a way with like songs or something like that just to calm myself down and you, I think my dad's always telling me right before I got on the track just don't think just go out there and do what your reflexes do and don't don't think I've got a question for you I'm gonna throw at you and it just kind of hit me this one what's your favorite racing movie Oliver uh t days of thunder or uh yeah I think it's days of thunder yep oh Hello. Hello. We <laughs> are definitely meant to be best friends because that's my favorite racing movie also. Yeah, yes. I, I I just like the scene where it's go out there and hit the pace car. I just always thought that was the funniest scene ever. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely my favorite racing movie. So, Oliver, okay, now I've, I've got to this portion of the show. This is where I want to surprise you. Next month, God willing, I've got two weeks left. I am going to send you a check over for $100 to put my name on your car starting next season. I would. I'll put your name on the car right away. That would be greatly appreciated, Josh. And uh, like I said, every single dollar counts. And uh, I mean, you've really done it ever since, ever since you, you messaged my dad. You've done everything for help my racing. And it that's going to be a huge boost for us because right now, I mean, like I said, Kurgan is really expensive and we really need any sponsor we can get. So I'll, I'll for sure, I'll put the podcast on there and I'll put your name on there, Josh. Uh, yes, don't yes, you yes, yes. So send me over your Venmo or PayPal information because I will definitely get that out right around the third. So yeah, yes. Thank you, Josh. And you. I, I, yeah. I, I always like to, to see people, uh, like put in money for the sport of karting. And I, I think it every, like I said, every single dollar helps. And I think it helps grow the sport as well, because the more people who can afford the sport and stay in the sport and will help the sport grow. And I'm going to let you in on a little philosophy too, Oliver. And this is my beliefs. And I kind of, the reason this is what my beliefs are with the sport of auto racing. And it's been kind of instilled in me when I started this out and got into, got to know the race for quite a bit. You and I will get to know the race car drivers quite well, just like I'm getting to know you rather well. We get into that zone, meeting you, meeting your family, meeting all the race car drivers. My philosophy is this all you race car drivers and racing teams instantly become a part of my family. Yeah, and I, I I always like to I, I like to feel uh I, I, I think it's really fun and it's uh, a nice thing to think to myself. And it, it, I've even had a few times where ever since we met where it just always makes you kind of feel good that I, I impacted someone's life in a good way. And it, I, I just, I like, I, I never like to leave anyone on a sour note. I always like people to think, look back and think of me and think good of me. Yes. I have an idea what you can do for your helmet next year, though, Oliver. This is going to be pretty cool too. Thinking about your nickname and it just kind of dawned on me. Your nickname is the Rev, right? Yep. Why not on the why not on the back of your helmet have somebody design a mural on the back of your helmet of like a top field dragster in the staging lanes with the lights and like the flames are coming out of the headers, and then underneath it put Rev it up. That that would be a good <laughs> good thing. Yeah, I, I struggle. I mean, I I kind of grow from a a basic dad. My dad always just kind of like black and white, so. Uh, I, I kind of carried on the same thing. I don't know much about designs or stuff like that, but I'll I'll look into that. I mean, I know my dad. Uh, he he kind of wanted to do something next year where we can uh, get all the sponsors on there and make the car look nice. So, um, I'll yeah, I'll, yeah. Uh, I'll think about doing that. Yes, yes, but yeah, that's what I wanted to surprise you with, Oliver. So yes, it is official, ladies and gentlemen. I am sponsoring Oliver the Rev starting in two thousand twenty four. <laughs> I'll uh I'll make sure to make a Facebook post about that one. Yes, yes, yes. So Oliver, who have you all met for professional race car drivers? Um, uh, I, well, I met Sheldon Creed. I met uh Ken Schrader, and uh, that's really about it. I I I'm obviously I'm, I'm pretty young still, so I got a lot of time to meet uh. NASCAR drivers and race car drivers yet. So one of the guys, one of the guys I suggest you meet, Oliver. And trust me, you got to find him at a dirt track because he's limiting his schedule now because he's getting close to retirement. 
you you ever get the opportunity to meet Kenny Wallace, do it. You and him, if you can get him to laugh, that's that's the name of the game with him. And I have an embarrassing story to share with you on this one, too. I went with a friend of mine to his autograph session. Yeah, it's been about 10, 12 years ago. And uh, a friend of mine says, hey, you got your day off from work, right? He says, oh, well, yeah, Ken Schrader, uh, Kenny Wallace is racing that. You want to go? I said, sure, you know, no problem. But he says, let's go to the autograph signing up at the convenience store where he's going to be at first. Okay, cool. So we get up there, Oliver, and he has this look on his face. He gives me this look, and I already know instantaneously what he's going to do because we have that connection. And I looked at him and I says, whatever you do, Jim, don't embarrass me. This is, yeah. And he's like, I've got this. I'm like, and I'm worried. <laughs> that was my next words out of my mouth. So we get up there, and Ken Wallace is like, hey, how's it going, guys? You know, we were like one of the first people there. I said, some autographs for him. Sure, not a problem. So we were, he was sitting there signing autographs for us and having a really good conversation with us, and I was just like, man, you know, this guy's pretty cool. Well, <clears throat> we were sitting there, and once again, Jim gives me this look, and I was just like, oh, my God. He's he's going to embarrass me. It's it's He's giving me that look. This is going to be an embarrassing moment. I already sensed this. So without missing a beat, he turns around and looks at Kenny Wallace, and he says, Kenny, I hate to tell you this, but he says, you know, when you're on TV, you look fat. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why? Why? So Kenny Wallace has got a business shirt on, and he's dressed up in dress clothes. So he lifts up his shirt, and he's like, dude, I'm not fat. And I'm like, oh, my God. Why me? Why now? Why am I in this in this moment? <laughs> so we 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 get him laughing and we we continue our conversation. Well, then crazy enough, Oliver, he has this he has a cell phone like all of us do, and his cell phone rings. Okay, he's like, Can I, I got to answer this call. Okay, cool. Let's stick around. I'll continue doing. Okay, cool. Go. So we're sitting there. Me and Jim are just kind of talking and going looking at his car, and. After a couple of minutes on the conversation, he's got his phone in his hand. He's like, I got a question for you. You guys on Facebook? Yeah, Kenny, why? Well, what's your guys' names? And we're like, oh, I'm Josh Nolan. This is Jim, da da da. He's like, the reason why I ask is he says, my wife wants to know if she can add you on Facebook. A NASCAR driver's wife wants to add me on Facebook? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So I'm yeah, that- Kenny Wall. Kenny Wallace's wife on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's that's pretty cool. And I I, I know I I had a, I I called you the other day and I was talking to you and I I I I I let, I, I told you uh I I I always think it's so cool how the racing community is so like nobody really acts like they're all it you know everybody at race car drivers especially dirt race car drivers are always gonna treat you like you're they're just some hometown track. Uh, racer and you just came up to him and now you guys are friends you know it's it's never really uh they're like them being famous they're not just gonna brush you aside you know um i always think that's that's really cool one of my best conversations i ever had with this racing show oliver really weirdly enough i had another oliver on my show about two years ago how this story goes and i don't know if you heard the story or not i have always been a big indycar fan indianapolis 500 Oh my God, the gr- the granddaddy of them all. You win that race, you're like God. It's because there's so much prestige involved in it. Well, I followed a guy back when I was growing up by the name of Dan Weldon. I don't know if you've ever heard of that guy or not. Have you, Oliver? Yep. Okay, Dan. Very. How can I put you this way? Very. Mm, all about fashion, fashion, and and having fun with his friends. Okay, cool. Well, lo and behold, Dan was taken from us at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in 2011. Always wanted to meet him, never got the opportunity. Well, I met this kid through the racing show. His name is Austin Olds. Definitely somebody I'm going to introduce you to in the racing show. He races um, carts, but he races road course pavement carts out in Indianapolis because he is from Indianapolis area. Well, his mom, Megan, says to me, she says, Josh, you know, who would you like to interview from the carding world? I says, you know, Megan, 
I, I've always dreamt of, or, you know, of uh, interviewing Oliver and Sebastian Walden because of that, just their dad's legacy, you know, where they're going with their racing career too. And she's like, man, she says, you know, that'd be pretty cool. She says, do you realize I have connections to that? And I was like, okay. Um, is there a way you can line me up an interview with them? She's like, well, let me go talk to our team owner, uh, I think it's MPX or MPX Racing, and see if we can't bring something. So a couple of bar weeks later, she calls me up and she's like, Josh, I was talking to our owner at MPX Racing, and he was talking to their owner. And the guy was like, yeah, he said, I'll go talk to Susie Walden, Oliver and Sebastian, see if they want to do this. I'll get back to you. So, okay. So a week later goes by, well, the guy from um, that owns the carts from Oliver and Sebastian Walden and the big Walden boys comes up to the owner from um, AMX Racing, I think it's called, or, or APX Racing. Um, but he comes up to him and says, hey, you know, they want to do this. How can I get in contact with Well, here's his contact information. Reach out to him. Lo and behold, Oliver, two years ago, I sat down with Oliver and Sebastian Walden. It's pretty cool. That That's cool. And, like, just like the last thing I said, uh, it, it's so cool how the racing community is just so, like, I I just kind of repeat myself here, but – uh. There, it's it's so friendly and kind, you know, and it, people always treat you like you are family. And you're just, uh, they never just kind of oh, brush you aside just because you're not as famous as them or something like that, you know. And you know something, Oliver. You know, your racing career is going to take you places. I I have faith in that, and I I I totally agree with that. Um, I hope that you know you can you can make it to the IndyCar series because I would love to come watch you race in the IndyCar. Definitely. Um, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely. And you know, crazy story about Dan Weldon, Oliver, because I got you on him, sharing stories back and forth at this portion of the show. Susie Weldon was telling me when I got ready to, to talk about, you know, having the boys in my wrist, and she says, Well, I got a question. What was it like living with Dan? She's like, Oh my God. She's like, Josh, do you realize I was his PR manager, public relations manager before me and him got married? And I says, No, no, no. She says, you you think people are high maintenance. You had never met my husband. And I was like, no, I never met your husband. I wish I could have. He's like, oh, my God, some of the stuff he, he did drove me nuts. And I says, why? She says, well, he was particular about his claws. She says, when I met him, his first words over his mouth to me is, I hope you realize what you're getting into when you when you meet, you start dating and you're working with me and stuff like that. She's like, well, why? What do you mean by that? He's like, well, you come to my house. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take off your dirty tennis shoes because I don't like dirty tennis shoes in my house. Okay. He's like, but I have a pair of slippers you can put on, brand new slippers. Yeah, yeah, yeah no big deal. Well, okay. So she says, so lo and behold, we start dating. And every driver collects things. You, I, and everybody in the racing world, we all collect things. Dan, weirdly enough, Oliver, Susan was telling me he collected new pairs of tennis shoes only because of his fetish with dirty tennis shoes. So I says to Susie, my next word on my mouth, Susie, is how many pairs of shoes did he have in his closet? He says, Josh, are you sitting down? Yeah, Susie, I am. He says, he had over 300 brand new pairs of Pumas in his closet. Jeez. That... <laughs> <laughs> He can pick a new shoe every single day of the year. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, Oliver. So yeah. So do you have any more questions for me? Um, not really, no. So Oliver, uh, my next question for you is um okay. Um one with your schedule, when would you like to start working with me? As far as what because um I would say probably um within the month uh uh okay because i was thinking you get done with football practice tomorrow night mm -hmm. you're home back home by 7 20 ish why not join me at 7 30 tomorrow night and i'll let you help me co-host it tomorrow night all righty I'm, I'm totally up to that yes definitely definitely so just um like i said i'm gonna call you in a few minutes to thank you in person oliver Another thing I want to ask you before we go any further, before we close out the show, I'll review. You know, do you have a racing page that the racing fans can follow you on? Um, well, they can follow me on 
uh our Schultz on Facebook and then also uh 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 I forgot what it's called. Uh Oliver I, I believe it's uh Schultz Precision Enterprises, uh which is a group and I'll post all my uh races I'll be running in the future, uh sponsors, stuff like that. And then uh I also have a messenger, so if anyone has any questions or would like to sponsor uh going into the twenty twenty four year, they can uh message me on Messenger. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you get time, go hit up Oliver Schultz on, on Facebook. Send him a message if you guys would like to help sponsor him out. Give him some good luck. Um, also, go hit up Schultz Precision Performance on Facebook because definitely you're going to find out about Oliver and his racing career. Also, ladies and gentlemen, um, definitely, like I said, you know, this is my new co-host, Oliver. We're going to do some pretty amazing things together. Hands down. Hands down. So, Oliver, Vince, I don't know if I can get you to help me close out the show or not with you. So we're going to go like this. I'm going to teach you a little thing or two when you when you're going to work with me. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank everybody that has been a part of my recent show. Dirt Track Race Cars as sponsors. Um, New England Human Affiliate Association. Um, Manning Motorsports. Anybody who would like to sponsor this racing show with me and Oliver, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook, my email address, jjnolan151 at gmail.com, or you can call or text me at 712-209-7138. But with that being said, Oliver, are you ready to rock this out and go for the night? Heck yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for being on the racing show with me and Oliver tonight on the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show, hashtag one on YouTube. Continue living life in full throttle, and see you later. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh,